All right, we are ready to start Chapter 10, all about roots and radicals. Uh, this first section, 10.1, um, we're going to look at radical expressions and graphs of equations that involve radicals. Um, the first thing we're asked to do, the uh, first type of problem you'll see in my lab probably will be, well, they'll give you a number, they'll ask you to find all roots of each number. Okay, when you're asked to find all roots, that's uh, finding both the positive square root and the negative square root of the number. So 625, if we find the positive square root, that's the square root we all know and love, just that radical symbol, square root of 625, right? Now you can use the calculator to, to evaluate that. What we're really asking is what number times itself equals 625. So your square root symbol, let's see, most calculators, the, my favorite, the TI30X2S, but a lot of calculators have this symbol above the square. Now let's see if you can see this a little bit better. I'll try to put my light on there. All right, that's a little bit better, maybe. All right, you can see the square root symbol above the x squared button, right? So for me, I'm going to hit second in that button, and I'll do 625. And that's 25, right? So that means 25 squared is 625. So that is one of the roots of this number. When we have to find all roots, we find the positive square root, and we also find the negative square root of 625, which would just be the opposite of what this is, and so we have negative 25. So the square roots of 625 are uh, 25 and negative 25. Okay. With a fraction, sometimes this could be a little tricky, but really not. Um, positive square root would be the square root of 121 over 196. Now, the square root itself is really just an exponent. It's the same as the one-half power. And your properties of exponents say if we take a power of a fraction, we can take that power to both top and bottom. So this is the same as the square root of 121 over the square root of 196. And so we can do those separately. What times itself is 121? Hopefully you know that's 11, right? We could take the square root of 121 on our calculator, so if you didn't, um, square root of 196, I don't know that one really. Maybe I do, but I'll just model this second square root of 196. 14, ah, 14 squared is 196. So 11 fourteenths would be the positive square root. The negative square root would just be the opposite of that. So we have 11 14 and negative 11 14 Now, if you're asked to find the square root and you're given the expression like this, you're only looking for the positive square root. Okay. The only time we do the plus and the minus is if we're asked to find all square roots of the number. Right. If we're actually given the radical symbol, this is the positive square root. That's the only one we're going to find. So. This is a fraction. We could do the square root of both top and bottom. Square root of 900 over the square root of 49, right? Well, square root of 900 is 30. 30 squared is 900. And if you didn't know, you could use your calculator. Square root of 49 is 7. So here, we only have one answer, just 30 sevenths. Because we weren't asked to find all square roots, just to evaluate this expression, really, we're only looking for the positive square root. There's no plus sign in front of here. It's still understood that this is the positive square root. Alrighty, so let's look at some others. We're asked to tell whether each square root is rational, irrational, or not a real number. Okay, so here are some terms. Rational, irrational, or not even a real number, right? So here we don't, we're not asked to find all square roots. We're just asked to look for this expression that involves a radical and evaluate it if possible and we'll talk about these terms in a second, okay? Um, so, uh, square root of 72. Basically, if it's a rational number, when you put this in your calculator, you'll get an answer that's not a repeating, or an, not a decimal that goes on forever, okay? Um, without repeating. Irrational means it's a decimal that goes on forever and does not repeat at all. So if we take the square root of 72 on our calculator, let's see, second square root of 72, what do we get? Ah, 
8.485281374. You don't see any repetition involved. It's a decimal. It goes on forever. It does not repeat. This would be an irrational number. Okay. This is irrational. Maybe I should put my answer in the blank over here. We're not asked to evaluate it, I guess. We're just asked to tell whether it's rational, irrational, or not even a real number. Square root of 72 is irrational. Um, we don't get a nice number. Now, in contrast, if we look at up here, number 3, when we find, find the square root of this, we found a number that could be written as a fraction, right? If you have a number that can be written as a fraction, that would be a rational number. So that's an example of rational. Irrational would be a number that cannot be written as a fraction. Okay. So the next one, square root of negative 36. What happens if you put that in your calculator? Let's see. Second, square root, negative 36. What is it? Domain error. It's a domain error because you cannot take the square root of a negative number. The reason you can't is because you'd be asking what times itself gives you a negative 36. Well, you can't square a number and get a negative, can you? Not a real number anyway. So this would be an example of a number that's not even real. Okay, so I'll put this in the blank. Not real. So that'd be an example of something that's not a real number. So not a real number. The irrational. You can probably guess what this one's going to be, because um, we only had three choices here. Square root of 6,400, what happens if you plug that in your calculator? Second, square root, 6,400. What do we get? Oops, didn't have that in the right. Second, square root, 6,400. What do we get? 80, right? That is a rational number. That's equal to 80. Uh, which we could write as a fraction. We could put it as 80 over 1 if we wanted to, which means this is a rational number. So to break that down for you again, rational means you could write it as a fraction. If you get a decimal that goes on forever without any repetition, that is an irrational number. It cannot be written as a fraction. And if you get a domain error, if there's no possible real number solution, then we get a number that's not even a real number. Okay? All right, so 7, 8, 9, we're just asked to find each root. So you might say cube root. Can you take the cube root of a negative? The answer is yes. And you can't take the square root of a, of a negative number because you can't square a number and get a negative. But you can cube a number and get a negative. A negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. And so let's see how we might do this cube root. Now there is a button on your calculator that can do this as well. Above the caret key, usually, is where you'll find um, this button. And uh, it's hard to see there. If I put this up, see there's an x root. Okay. So to use that, I'm going to put in a 3 first because it's a cube root. And then I'll use second the caret key here. So that means we're taking the third root of a number. And what we're taking the third root of is negative 64. Um, I'm going to put that in parentheses. It's a good habit to put a negative number in parentheses. Um, so this, what this expression on my calculator, calculator says is find the cube root of negative 64. And it's going to give me some number, negative 4. And the reason this works is because we can take negative 4 times itself three times and we get negative 64. So negative 4 is the cube root. Can we do the fourth root? Yeah, same button, right? So second caret key. Oh wait, I gotta put in the 4 first. 4. Second caret key. So that's the fourth root of 256. What do we get? We get positive 4. And that works because 4 to the 4th is 256. Okay. The 7th root of negative 1. Maybe you already know what this is. What times itself 7 times is going to give you negative 1? Think about that for a second. Yeah, Negative 1 would work, wouldn't it? And if you weren't sure, you could try your calculator. Let's see what my calculator says. Um, uh, all right. Let's see where you can see it better. 
So I do 7 second, the xth root. So that means the seventh root of negative 1. I'm going to put that in parentheses. We get negative 1. All right. So that's it for this page, and we'll continue with the next video on the next page.